Did you see the new episode of Rick and Morty, Season 3? That was one hell of an episode. Something I noticed was the old portal guns in the flashbacks. I looked at that and I was thinking, I could make that. And here we are, 3D printed version of the old portal gun. If you want to see how I make it, stick around. I'd like to get a 10 piece McNugget and a bunch of the Szechuan sauce, like as much as you're allowed to give me. There weren't many views of the portal gun, so I started out by trying to establish the basic shape based on what I could see, and then gauging how the proportions work together, and noting important details. Designing from Rick and Morty is an interesting challenge, because I'm trying to extrapolate a 3D object from a 2D stylized illustration. The three angles that the portal gun is visible from seem to have slightly different perspectives, which leaves me open for a unique interpretation of it, and I can make the portal gun just a little less blocky. The blocky design reminded me of the old Apple Macs from the early 90s, so I did a quick form study to explore their angular shapes. Plus, the young Rick was probably developing the portal technology around this era, so we can assume his designs were influenced by what was available. Anyway, we've established the shape and design of the portal, so the final challenge is what the front would look like, because the cartoon didn't show any views from that angle. Now I know the modern portal gun has three nozzles, but the teleportation gun Rick was building only had one, and then the rough portal gun he built had one nozzle and a small aimer. So I settled upon this single large nozzle with a smaller aimer and arranged them together in a way that best fitted the square face of the old portal gun. But before we can start doing the CAD, we have to establish the references for the portal gun. I based this on a Nerf gun and trimmed it out of paper just to check how it felt in my hand. Using this, we can bring the image straight into CAD, expand it to size, and start making the portal gun. So you can see the object has come into shape quite quickly, and then adding the finer details, such as rounding the edges, immediately gives the design a more appealing look. The next step is to build the assembly. I have a fairly clear idea in my head of how I want the assembly to come together, and so I'm creating these sketches here, which become the central references for all other parts. As you'll see, I'll build all other parts off these sketches, which makes it easier to modify them when I need to. I'm not sure if it's my imagination, but it looks like Rick's portal gun has these striations through the black grip. Certainly it makes it much nicer to look at and hold. Creating these lines took some time. The challenge is that the top and the bottom of the grip are not parallel. However, their tilt inwards creates a central intersect that I could build an array outwards from. From there, I divided up the surface of the object and thickened them inwards to cut into the object. After making new parts for the assembly, I also have to cut away from the main portal gun body so that everything has a place to plug into. The power dome and nozzles were the easiest parts to make, but I required regular checking with my screenshots to see that they were the right size to the rest of the body, and then a raised lip around them made the plasma containers appear properly joined. The final details I'm doing are the egg timer and the switch on the side. The egg timer was minimally designed like the rest of the object, but it was purposefully made separate from the body so that it could be turned and twisted when assembled. The switch, on the other hand, is too fine to be flicked back and forth, but anyone making this has the option to pick up a real switch from any electronics shop and patch it in. And so, with just a few cuts and exports, this portal gun prototype is ready for fabrication. Now that we've finished printing all the pieces, let's have a look at how they went. As you can no doubt see, some of the pieces have come out a little worse for wear. This is due to the temperature settings being off. In the meantime, let's give this a quick assembly. A few small issues I noticed. One is that the egg timer is exceptionally tight in here, and I need to figure out a better way of joining the various halves together, such as with pins or guides. It should help with stability, and make it easier to glue. All other pieces plug together quite well, but I might move the aimer from here to here. But all in all, I would consider this 
quite a successful prototype. I've made a larger gap around the egg timer and shortened the stem so it moves easier. I've also extended the tip of the timer so that it comes in contact with the lip and hopefully makes a clicking noise as it's turned. The cable is the final part to make. I used a curve stretching from base to base as a rough guide as I arrange spheroids like beads. Here we are the next day and I've just printed off all the pieces that we changed last night. I've also made some other changes that I didn't record, so let's go over them now. The most significant change is with how I've parted the objects. This is the original block and you'll see how I was having walking through here. And so when they come together, you're getting this visible split. On here, printed in this direction. And so the small walking is through the back here. The result is that it's not too noticeable when you bring these together. As a result, I had to cut off the edge here just so the handle can fit in easily. The timer on the side fits in much more easily and turns quite smoothly. It doesn't go click like I'd hoped, but that's alright. I've added a small dip into the red button, I've added a larger round on the trigger here, and here we have the new piece printed off. Now let's put this all together. But of course, there's one more thing we have to do, glue these together. And there we have it, one portal gun ready for adventure. A significant improvement over the prototype. I'm quite pleased by how the buttons and the cable have turned out and everything fitted and plugged together quite easily. Not too heavy, fits well in my hand and definitely looks like the portal gun out of the episode. If you want to make your own, you can download the designs from my mini factory or else you can buy a ready-made one through my Etsy store. Links are in the description below. And I love seeing the results of people making my work. So please share it with me at initeration on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. And if you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.